Hello witches, wizards and those who are yet to receive their Hogwarts school letters, welcome to my Harry Potter kitchen. This is the YouTube series where I'm baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes for all of the food and drink we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we made some butterbeer lightning bolt ice cream sandwiches, then make sure you check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if it's your first time in the kitchen and you want to see some more Harry Potter themed treats, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. Speaking of which, let's head back into the chamber and see what's next. Okay, so let's head back into chapter one, the worst birthday to see what's up next. So Harry is still enduring his punishment of doing some garden work. He is mowing the lawn, washing the car, painting the bench. And on the next page, Aunt Petunia has just called him back inside and I can see our next recipe. On top of the fridge stood tonight's pudding, a huge mound of whipped cream and sugared violets. We haven't even had the main course yet, but let's make room for pudding. If you want to recreate Aunt Petunia's famous pudding, all of the ingredients, measurements, and method will be on my website, bradleybakes.co.uk. The link is down below in the description. So I'll let you in on a little secret. When I came up with the idea for my Harry Potter kitchen, this is actually the recipe that I was most looking forward to. We are about 70 recipes in, but finally we get to recreate Aunt Petunia's famous pudding. Now, the book tells us that it has whipped cream and sugared violets, but we're also gonna rely on the movies where we see that famous levitating pudding with green, purple, and of course, some cherries. Now, there's a little bit of a debate online whether it's a cake, but I think it's more of a paddle over. So we're gonna make some meringues today, stack that up with all of our whipped cream, and then add on our cherries and flowers to finish. But of course, it's my Harry Potter kitchen, so we're gonna add a little bit of magic to this one and make Aunt Petunia's pudding levitate. First things first, we are going to make meringues, and that means we need to start off by separating our eggs. Now, this is a really, really important step, so make sure you take your time because we don't want to get any egg yolk or any shell into our egg whites. Otherwise, our pavlova won't rise and be nice and marshmallowy in the middle. So this is how to do it. The best way to do this is to get three separate cups and then we're gonna crack these eggs one at a time, separating the egg whites and egg yolks into two of our cups. And then once we're happy that our egg whites are nice and pure, we'll pour them into our main jug. Crack the eggs, move them back and forth between the shells to remove the whites and then pop the yolk to one side. Once you're happy, the egg whites are nice and clear, pour them into your main jug and then continue repeating this process for the rest of your eggs. Okay, once all of our egg whites are separated, it's also really important to make sure your mixer is free from any impurities too. So you don't want any little crumbs from whatever you made in there before, no grease, because that will also affect the way the pavlova rises. So make sure you give it a really, really good clean. And another tip is to wipe it with some lemon juice and then a paper towel, just to remove any excess grease. Okay, now we're good to go. We're gonna pour in our egg whites and then whisk it up until it's light and frothy. Okay, once you've got to the soft peak stage, your mixture should have doubled or tripled in size, and then we're gonna slowly add in our sugar, a spoonful at a time as we continue to whisk. You don't wanna add this in too quickly, otherwise you'll deflate your egg whites, so make sure you go nice and slowly, allowing it to fully incorporate before you continue adding some more. Once all of your sugar is incorporated, it should be light, fluffy, and glossy. And that's the point when we can add in our extra ingredients. So we're gonna add salt and vanilla for some flavoring, and then two magical ingredients of corn flour and white wine vinegar. Now these two are gonna make sure that our pavlova bakes nice and crisp on the outside, but when we cut into the middle, it's gonna be lovely and marshmallowy. Add your salt, vanilla, corn flour and white wine vinegar into your egg whites and then continue whisking for three to five minutes until it forms stiff peaks. After about five minutes, your meringue should be lovely and thick and you'll notice that none of it is dripping down from the whisk, so that is a great sign that it is good to go. Of course, if you want to do a little Wingardium Lily Osart trick, you'll know it's ready when you can hold it upside down on your head. 
So when you look at Aunt Petunia's pudding, it is stacked with two different size circles. At the base, there is a wider circle of meringue and then the smaller ones are stacked in a towel in the middle. So for this, we're gonna use some baking paper and trace around two circular baking tins and then we're gonna place those onto another baking tin and pipe our meringue on top before we bake them. Trace around your baking tins. You want one larger circle and then three smaller circles. Make sure you leave a border around the outside as this is where our meringues are going to expand in the oven. Then all you need to do is line your baking trays which are slightly larger than your cut out piece of baking paper. And a quick trick is to use a little bit of your meringue, just dollop that into each corner and that will help keep our baking paper in place. To help us pipe these into some nice even circles, we're gonna transfer our meringue into a piping bag. And I've also got a star nozzle on the end of that. So that's gonna give us a really cool finish around the outside. The best and easy way to do this is to place your nozzle on and then pop it into a glass and that'll keep it nice and sturdy as we fill it up. Carefully pipe around the border on top of your baking paper. Once you've piped out your discs, these then need to go into the oven at 100 degrees Celsius for an hour and a half. And it's that low and slow bake that's gonna get a nice crisp outer shell and a really marshmallowy filling. Now, another trick is to turn off your oven after an hour and a half, but leave the meringues inside with the door slightly open. As the temperature slowly drops, it's gonna continue cooking, but also dry out the outside so it's really, really crisp. But of course, our inside is still gonna be lovely and gooey. While the meringues are in the oven, we're gonna move on to making our pavlova fillings. And as the book tells us, that's mounds of whipped cream and some sugar violets. So we're gonna start off with the cream and we're gonna dye this into purple and green so we can replicate the pudding from the film. So first off, we're gonna whisk our food coloring into the cream just to make sure we can get it nice and evenly blended and then we won't over whip it when we move into the mixer. Add in your food coloring gel and then whisk through until you have a nice even color. Remember, it will lighten up as it whisks and the air is incorporated, so you want to go a few shades darker than the end result. Once it's ready, pour into your mixing bowl and add in your icing sugar and vanilla extract. Once the cream is ready, we're gonna pop it into some piping bags with some star nozzles on top, and that's just gonna help us get a nice decorative finish on top of our pudding. Cut the end of your piping bags off so you can fit the nozzle in and then fill up with each of your coloured creams. These can go back into the fridge until you're ready to use them. After the cream, we're gonna move on to the sugar violets. And for this, I'm using real edible flowers. Now, if you're gonna recreate this, you need to make sure you get an edible variety because not all flowers are safe to eat. Once you've got them, you also want to wash them just to remove any excess dirt. And we're gonna keep them a little bit damp as that's gonna help the sugar stick to them. So once they're nice and washed, we're just gonna pop them into a bowl and then toss them with the sugar until they're all nicely coated. Sprinkle a few of your washed flowers into a bowl. Add a teaspoon of sugar and then gently toss them until they're nice and coated. Take them out one by one and place them on a board to dry. So that is all of our pavlova toppings and fillings ready to go and the last step is to assemble. But I did promise at the start that this pudding would be levitating because pesky Dobby is out there trying to cause trouble. And for this effect, we're gonna use white candy floss and break it off into pieces around the outside and the bottom of a clear cake stand so it looks like a cloud of smoke. Place your largest meringue dish onto your cake stand. Then pull off strips of your white candy floss and tuck it underneath while dangling over the side. Keep on going round and fill in any gaps as you go. Once you're happy with your candy floss border, it's time to start stacking. Now the first layer of cream is gonna be purple with green in between and our cherries on top. Alternate your purple and green cream and then place cherries on top of your green swirls. You then want to fill the center with some more green and purple cream. 
So that is our base almost finished. The last step is to place our sugar violets onto the purple swirls. And don't worry, if you can't find yourself some edible flowers, you can also use fondant flowers or hard sugar craft flowers. Place your sugar violets on top of your cream and then sandwich your next meringue disc into the center. Okay, the base is the hardest part to stack. So once you've mastered that, the next two steps are very, very easy. We're gonna do big purple swirls over the next layer with small green blobs in between, sandwich on our next meringue and then flip it the other way. So green swirls and then purple dots in between that. Start with your purple swirls, working your way around the outside and then use the green to fill in the gaps and the center. Sandwich your next meringue disc on top. You then want to repeat the process, flipping the colors. That's green swirls and then purple to fill the gaps. So we've finally made it to the top tier and we're gonna finish this one off with a few more of our purple swirls and some cherries in between. You can of course personalize this however you like, but we're gonna try and keep it as close as possible to the moons. Slowly work your way around the top using the old swish and flick technique and then fill in all of the gaps with some more glacé cherries. And voila! Aunt Petunia's famous pudding is complete. I've been waiting so long to recreate this recipe and I'm very, very happy with how this one has turned out. But let me know what you think down below in the comments, especially if you're gonna give it a go yourself. That is all for this week's episode. If you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every Magic Monday when there is a brand new recipe. I'm about to eat this one before Dobby gets his hands on it and I'll see you next week. Aunt Petunia would be proud. <laughs>